Well, hello again, do-it-yourselfers. Terry Peterman, the internet electrician, and welcome to another video short on current topics. In this video, it's part of my smart home series, and I'm going to install and review the SwitchBot system. Now, it all starts, the heart of the system is the SwitchBot Hub Mini that you need to connect to interface with all your devices through your Wi-Fi to the internet. And it comes with several different devices that are available. Uh, we've got a, a thermometer and hygrometer here that monitors your temperature and humidity in the home. And then the SwitchBot devices themselves, which you can use to control light switches, coffee makers, your computer, all kinds of things, all kinds of uses for this. So to get things started, the first thing you need to do is go get the app. Now they provide you a QR code on the back of the box of the Hub Mini for the, either the Google Play Store or the App Store. So you just simply scan that QR code like I'll show you on the screen capture. And then that takes you to Safari where you simply go download the app. Now I've already downloaded the app. So what it showed for me on this one was an update. So I just touched on that and it loaded up the update and you can open the app. Now setting this app up was very simple. As per most apps, you follow the instructions using your email or your phone, whatever the app asks you for, phone number or email as your contact and login. Get a password and away you go. Now I've been, been reviewing a few products lately where I've had nothing but headaches downloading the apps and getting the devices to work with it. And I was beginning to wonder if I was the problem or if the apps are the problem. But then with the SwitchBot here, this worked smoothly, flawlessly, add a device, it worked great. So let's show you how to do that. First off, like I said, you needed to do the SwitchBot Hub Mini. So I got that going, connected to my Wi-Fi with the password. And I also have already connected my thermometer hygrometer, so it's up and live. Now let's show you how to actually do one of the SwitchBot minis. In the box they provide you with a quick start guide. Of course also here is a QR code for the app. There's a little tab inside that you've got to pull out to activate the battery and the one application I'm going to use it on, I'll show you where I've installed that on my garage door opener. I've got an older home here and my remote control for the garage door is an older model that I can't seem to find another remote for so I just found the perfect application for the first little switch bot. It's to push my garage door opener. So I'm going to show you where I mounted that show you how that works via the app. Then we'll go ahead and install another one of these switch bots in a different location on a switch and I'll show you how that device can work on a switch where you have to connect a little tab to pull the switch, push the switch on and then pull it actually off again. So let's do that. Let's first show you what I've got going here with my garage door opener. I'm just getting back to the switch bot hub mini that's your interface that just has to be plugged into a USB power supply and anywhere within the range of your Wi-Fi network and that gets connected up and of course then this has to remain plugged in to make all your devices work so let's show you how to set up one of these switch bots comes in the package like this out of the box has a little quick start guide it's got the QR code again for the app if you haven't already downloaded that. And now I'll give you a screen capture of exactly how we're going to connect this second switch bot to my app. So we'll insert the screen capture here and you'll see exactly what I'm doing on my phone. So I go to the switch bot app. Pull the switch bot itself out of the package and pull a little tab to release the battery. It's a protective contact that uh, blocks your battery from being connected, I should say. So you pull that out and that turns your switch bot live. 
and you see right away on the screen that second switch bot came up. Bot 07 was the first one. Bot 79 now is live. So I should be able to just operate this and it works. I tell you, this is one of the smoothest apps and the easiest integration I've ever seen. I mean, that just popped up. I didn't even have to click on add a device. Okay, so what we can do with this, these little pads, that you can see it's got a stick-on 3M pad, and I'll show you what happens with that little bot again. When I activate it, that little finger comes out and either pushes a button or pushes a switch on, and then if you want to be able to pull that switch off, then you have to use this little tab with a little piece of fishing line on it and that'll pull the switch. It'll push it on and then pull it back off or vice versa because in here in the settings on your app, go back to my screen capture here, you can set up all different applications for it. Password and mode. Now you can have it press and hold. You can change your time that you want that little, the, the little nub to come out for one second, two second, all the way up to as many seconds as you'd like, or you can change it to an on off type of function. So your press mode can be switch mode, switch it here, and in switch mode, that'll make it come out when you activate it and make it go off when you deactivate it. And you can reverse that operation as well. So it uh, just reverses that action. If you inverse it, then when you push the button, it'll, it'll retract. And when you push it again, it will deploy itself. So let's go mount this on a switch and see how it works. So staying with that screen capture now, you can see I've changed that to the switch mode. So bot 79, if I hit on, it retracts and off. It deploys and that's in that opposite or the inverse mode right now I want to change that back to the regular mode just so that the it's opposite of what we just showed and another uh, helpful tip here would be on the somewhere in a discrete location if you're gonna have several of these bots you're gonna to want to write on them the number of the bot of the device that the uh, app assigned to that one just so you can keep track of what's what and you can also rename them to Call them whatever you want, what switch you're working on. See, I can go here with the screen capture, bot 79. I can change that to whatever I'm working with it. So uh, the first one I would go call it my door, bot 7. I can edit the name of it, call it the garage door opener. that one's named so you wouldn't really need to label your devices as such because you know that that's stuck on the garage door opener and that's my garage door opener so let's go install this on a switch all right so here's one application for the switch bot that they didn't mention in the instructions of one of the ways you can use it so I tried it on my garage door opener and it wasn't quite strong enough to push this large button all on its own but what I did is just added a little piece of plastic and a, and a smaller pressure point there for the bot to hit and that operates the door flawlessly. It's enough to push it. I set it for one second just to make sure we get a firm press on it. So we go to the app here, go to my garage door opener and hit the activation and away goes my garage door. Now I can hit it again, it'll stop it. And then hit it again and it closes the door so that works pretty much perfectly it was the answer to my problem of not being able to find another remote when we bought this house it only came with one remote so now I have a remote right on my phone right on my hip all the time so when I'm coming home 
I can just open the garage door. So one great application for that switch bot. The 3M two-sided tape they come with is extremely sticky. So that's, that's on there firm. It's not going anywhere. So there's a great application for the switch bot. Okay, here we are at my light switch. I'm going to put this on my outside light so I can turn those outside lights on when we get home and set them on schedules, do whatever you want with them. But first you've got to decide now where the switch bot is going to work the best. This is a Decora switch and I think it'd be better on the bottom here and it'll actually have to stick right over top of the plate screw but you can see there's a slot there where the where the device arm comes out anyway so that shouldn't affect sticking onto that plate nice and tight and then I'm gonna have to reverse the operation of this so that when I hit now it's set up normally in the switch mode so when I hit on it's gonna actually shut the light off and then when I hit off it's gonna pull it back up and on so I've got to go and reverse that on my app so we'll insert my screen capture here and as you can see on their bot 79 we're gonna first rename it we'll call it the outside lights entrance outside lights and then we have to Go back, I canceled that, I should have saved that. Anyway, I can do that after. Now what we want to do is go to the password and mode function and inverse the on off direction. So we inverse the on off direction, go back and rename that and not erase it as I did. Save that. All right, so now at the back at the uh, main screen, the home screen of your switch bot, you can hit off and it'll push it off. And when you hit on, we'll put on that little pad that's going to pull the switch to the on position. So now we've got to stick that pad on there and hook the hoop around. And before you stick anything down, you want to just make sure it's all going to work. So I would think if I stick that pad about right there, when it goes to the other position, that should be enough to pull that switch to the up position. So let's give it a try. We'll stick that pad on, put the bot in the right position so we can hook the little fish line into the slot as it's designed. All right, and again, before we stick the switch bot on. Let's just try it to make sure when we push it to on that it pulls that switch to the on position before I stick that down. Perfect. Off. All right, now we can peel the backing off and stick that switch bot onto the plate. Okay, and we'll try it now hands free. Turn the light on and shut the light off. Excellent. Here's a nice close-up of where that fish line ties right into the, the proper slot. So I'll give you another look at how it works. Turn on that switch and shut off that switch. So now I'd like to make a schedule for that bot. So we'll go back to the SwitchBot app and my screen capture function here. Entrance outside lights. Settings. Schedule. First you want to sync your clock. That's done. Now we're going to add a schedule. So you put the time you want to put in there. So five and the minutes o'clock p.m. done you want it to turn on save that and then I want to add one and I want it to shut off at 8 p.m. and 
in zero minutes or wherever you want that. Done. I want it to go off. Save. So there, now you see it's going to go on at 5 and off at 8 p.m. every day or you could select the days of the week. So just to show you some of the limitations of the bots, I've opened up another one here and activated it. It calls itself bot 0D for now. When I pulled the strip out, immediately it activated. Now I'm trying it on my Tassimo coffee maker here from Bosch and the button's all ready to go. You could set this up the night before. It's green light, ready to roll, but push that bot button. And it's just not quite strong enough to, to activate that button. So there are some limitations in the applications. Here's another situation where you might want to use a switch bot. Let's say you're not at home for the weekend and your outdoor camera picks up some motion. You know somebody's prowling around there and you want them to believe you're home. So you could turn on a couple lights just to scare them off, but mount one of these on your stereo. This particular one is hitting the play button. You can have it turn on your stereo to the radio and they believe you're home. So there you have it, the SwitchBot system. The, the applications for these are quite endless, really. Like they say, the light switch, it was as we've done. Coffee machine, I might do that with our coffee maker. Uh, computer, but you've got thermostat, humidity monitoring in your home. You can set the parameters for that, that you want alarms. So if your temperature is too warm in the house, you'll be notified. If it's too low, of course, you can set that parameter as well. And your humidity, say your humidity shoots up to 100%, maybe you want a, an alert at about 80% to know that something's amiss. And vice versa, if it gets too low, could be a house on fire, sucking up all the humidity. Anyhow, this is a, it's a great little system. The app was so easy to use, very impressed. I would recommend these highly and the applications you might find for them are pretty much endless. So thanks again for watching. Terry Peterman, the internet electrician. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and click that little notification bell so that you'll be first to know when I release a new video. Thanks again. Until next time.